Great. Thank you, everyone. Let's move on to our next question. Co-ops have been relatively resilient, operating in highly competitive markets and a challenging economy. Why is that, and how can we build on that success? What are the most important aspects of the cooperative advantage for members and potential members to understand? Uh, this past week, I've been attending meetings in Washington of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. And, of course, the main topic is the ongoing uh, economic challenges and the banking crisis uh, in, in Europe. And uh, I learned and have known for a while that uh, about half of the uh, banks in Europe are cooperative banks, uh, very much like our, uh, our, our, our credit unions here in the United States, the retail financial cooperatives. And uh, they have survived the, uh, uh, the financial crisis and the banking crisis very well. Major reason is that they don't have outside stockholders. So the value of the cooperative is cooperative bank is not increasing or decreasing depending upon what the current situation is uh, on the stock markets. So they've been able to conduct their business uh, very well uh, and continue to serve their members and are seen as a really solid safe haven, haven uh, for, for people uh, who are we're looking for a safe place for their money. So the same thing is true here in the United States where the fact that we don't have outside stockholders that we operate on a cooperative or a mutual basis uh, and, and are not impacted with the ups and downs of the stock market uh, really have provided a great benefit to uh, consumers and members of cooperatives uh, here in the U.S. So I think that's an important lesson to be learned is that be because the, uh, the cooperatives don't need to take risks in order to maximize profit, they're a much safer bet during a recession. I think really the reason that food co-ops in particular have weathered the economy as, as well as we have is the connection that consumers feel to their local food store. And food is a very important part of everyday life. Hopefully most people are eating every day and having that connection to where your food comes from, from an entity that is committed to the local community and the local economy, local growers, um, and all of the values that um, are represented by the cooperative model, I think people resonate with having that connection to their day-to-day -day source for food. And I think the thing that we have to continue to build on is that connection to the mission-based aspects of doing business. It isn't just about transactions. It isn't just about buying food. It's about those social commitments, those environmental commitments that are represented by food co-ops. I think that's because people trust co-ops. And in this economic climate, um, people are really questioning whether or not we can trust big corporations. And there's a lot of questions about whether or not we trust government. And surveys have shown that people do trust co-ops. Uh, co-ops exist to meet people's needs. They don't exist for other purposes. So it makes sense that people trust co-ops. What we need to keep doing or, or strengthen, I think, is recommit ourselves to being trustworthy, to earning and, and keep earning people's trust. Uh, we can do that by always being sure that we're making decisions in the best interest of the members. Uh, we tell the truth. Trust the process. Democracy is messy sometimes. Uh, having uh, lots of people in on uh, thinking about and, and making decisions um, maybe not be as smooth. But in the end, if we really trust people and their participation in the co-op, um, it can lead to good decisions for people as a whole and reinforce that co-ops are trustworthy and have the best interest of the co-op at heart. So in addition, the purpose of a co-op is to serve the needs of the members as a whole. And there's, there's a lot of diversity often within the member, membership, different people who want different things. So it's really important for co-ops to hear the me, to hear the individual voices about what I want or um, what individuals want, but then to serve the we and to explain to members why decisions are made in the best interest of the we. So not everybody gets their way in a co-op, um, but if the co-op leaders are attentive to uh, what is in the best interest of the co-op as a whole and communicate that clearly, transparently to members, it can be really helpful. Well, I think we see that co-op 
members are, are very aware of the politics of food and the things that drive business. While a lot of people shop at co-ops because they like the food in the community, what the advantage is really in the different economic model that we are pursuing. The, the ability to control our own destinies to a certain extent and to have a voice in, in how food politics plays out in our lives. Supporting our local producers, keeping jobs in the community. I mean, these are all very big topics in the news and among many people of many persuasions, but co-ops are, are doing something about it on the ground level and actually making these opportunities real for people. So for that reason, they will always be relevant. Why they're resilient? Well, again, I think it's the same reasons that they're relevant. And we do struggle in, in down economies somewhat, but I think co-ops have done much better than other businesses because people are willing to invest their trust and even the, the dollars in a business that they believe in as opposed to a business that obviously hasn't done much to take care of them is just because they're struggling uh, you know we, we've got tight money we're gonna spend it more wisely so in some ways economy poor economies help co-ops and traditionally I think we've seen a rise in the number of co-ops during poor economies unfortunately there is when co-ops have risen and become very strong there's also been a, a pushback from our the competitive marketplace and if, if they feel that we are infringing on their sacred ground, there have been some pretty severe efforts to suppress the formation of co-ops in the past. And are we past that in our, in our political life? I hope so. But uh, there is a risk, I think, that when we are successful, we also are a threat to the status quo. Uh, so we need this, all the strength we can get to and the support of, of as many different people as possible in this movement, and we'll keep going. We've always bounced back. The uh, International Labor Organization, the ILO, uh, published a report just at the start of this recession, or shortly after the start of the recession, called The Resilience of the Cooperative uh, in Times of Recession. And they focused on the, the fact that cooperatives were faring relatively well in this difficult financial time and there were a couple reasons for that one is because the risk model is different cooperatives are not structured to take imprudent risks they're not trying to maximize the the, the profit on an investment they're trying to solve a problem they're, they're serve, they serve as a solution for their members and so they, they operate in an area they know they serve members interests they don't go out and try to uh, to uh, to get into uh, all kinds of esoteric uh, investment vehicles that cause so much trouble in this uh, in this most recent uh, uh, decline the other reason that cooperatives have have fared better have fared well is because their members trust them and members in a time of crisis look to to safe harbors they look to places that are credible, where there's integrity, where they have confidence. And members have a lot of confidence uh, in their cooperatives. We can build on that success by emphasizing how we're different, to emphasize trust, to emphasize transparency, and to really emphasize that cooperatives are a place where members have a voice. And we're at a time in the world when many people are wondering if they really can have an impact. They're wondering if the financial systems that govern their lives, that dictate their lives, that control how they can work and how they, where they shop and how they shop and what goods are available, whether those are really failing them. And we can emphasize that in a cooperative, the members have a voice. They govern. The people who benefit from the cooperative, in fact, uh, dictate how it, uh, how it operates. The uh, International Year of Cooperatives in 2012, which the UN has declared, is an incredible opportunity for us to get this message out and to really tell the difference uh, between the cooperative and other, other financial models. And in fact, the, uh, the ICA board, uh, the International Cooperative Alliance board, uh, has set a vision that by the end of this decade, by 2020, the cooperative will be the fastest growing business model in the world. And we think that that's very, very doable. 
So the resilience comes from the governance process. Um, the be, because the business needs to deliver a service or de, uh, fill a need that it, uh, is experienced by the owner members of the co-op, the focus is on how do we deliver the service uh, in the way that people need to have it delivered and then do that at least reasonable cost or at least sustainable cost. Um, and so the resiliency comes, we're not going out trying to take risk to make return on, on invested capital. Our, our objective is to make sure that the needs get met and that enforces an internal discipline that, that creates this resilience. We don't get overextended. Um, I guess sometimes we get, uh, we probably take fewer risks than we should, but the, the resilience comes from there. Um, I think the opportunities for growth come from an understanding of that model. And because the cooperatives, while a large, uh, are a part of our economy, they're not always a part of everyone's everyday existence. And we don't always recognize the difference that comes when you're operating a business to meet a member need as opposed to finding a new customer um, and extracting uh, not only the value of the service, but a, prom a profit from that customer. And there's a whole different mindset that comes. And, and once we recognize that, then we can play with that in a positive way.